Hello and welcome to another edition of Fabulous Woman. I'm Marvereen Cole, your host, journalist and broadcaster. And this time round, it's Jenny Carpenter. Jenny believes in empowerment and self-development in the very real sense of both phrases. She runs her own business called True Potential, running workshops around mindset and well-being, which is something we have to so much be in tune with now as our lives seem to get busier and busier. Get ready to hear about her life working in financial services, how she ended up being burned out and all the way to her learning NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming to me and you, as well as starting up her own company to help others thrive. It's compelling. Sit back, relax and enjoy Jenny Carpenter, Fabulous Woman. So first of all, for people who don't know anything about you, in a nutshell, who are you? And what do you do? I'm a mother of three wonderful children. I have seven grandchildren and I'm a business owner, an entrepreneur. I have an amazing partner who's my rock, Warren. Um, And I'm out there helping people function at their optimum level. So my business and what I do, I'm very passionate about helping people achieve better results within their lives. Um, And that's what I do. Excellent. And how do you do that? Um, Well, I work with small to medium sized businesses currently at the moment, about 90% of my time. And then the other 10% I'm working on a personal basis. And it's about working on the internal strategies, what makes people successful. So I work and help and support people from the internal perspective where we work on the mindset. We work on values and beliefs. And we're looking at people performing at the optimum level from that internal perspective. Wow, sounds fascinating. I mean, how did you get there to do that? Because, you know, we read a lot about people who are, um, you know, inspiring uh, uh, people who are leading their own businesses, kind of coaching almost. What led you to creating this business and how long was it established? Right. Okay. well, I started off in the financial sector, so I did 17 years as an independent. And then around about 2012, I just wanted to change. I felt that, you know, it was a great business and everything, but I just felt there was a time for me to move on and do something different that was very passionate to me. So I started working and taking all that I'd learned in the 17 years and working with business owners on what I call the external strategies. So it's looking at business development. And we did that through processes like looking at marketing plans. We were looking at financial plans. We were looking at, you know, getting the right people into businesses and individuals and generally working at anything that was external within the business. And it was successful. We were doing really well. But I just noticed when we were working with the individuals that they weren't reaching the full potential within their business. There was sort of a disconnection in some way. So, for example, we'd work with the business owner. We worked, say, for example, one lady and she wanted a marketing plan to bring her business to, to be more successful. And when I got to work with her, I found that she'd lost the passion within her business. She was completely disconnected, and this was just one example. So no matter what marketing plan we brought in, no matter what strategy, the fact that she was emotionally disconnected, she came into the business and it was losing money. And this is, you know, very, very many same people doing the same sort of thing, um, perhaps going into the business, feeling angry and frustrated. And it got me thinking, it got me thinking, well, yes, OK, they're improving the business, but they're really not reaching their fullest potential here. Um, Now, I'd been working on my personal development for many years for many reasons. And so I started to think and think, well, how can we get these people to change what's happening within their business? And I started to introduce all the structures and processes that I'd been using for so many years personally that had made some magnificent changes for myself. And that was amazing. We started to see such a big difference response within the businesses. We started to see the businesses generate more profitability. But also we were aligning the people and the people were feeling different, the relationship within their business. So it was really through a slight default, really, of working with what I was working to find out that it wasn't working, if that makes sense. And that's really interesting where you've come from and that you're helping people with with businesses and then you see, "Mm, 
even that, even all the resources we're throwing at this still Absolutely. doesn't quite work no. for those people. And then, you know, you linked it to the kind of personal development you were doing for yourself and have been doing for yourself. Yes. And thought, maybe this will work. Absolutely. And, and you're saying there's a disconnect. Was that like... um People just weren't passionate about the business that they were running, the idea that they had, or they lost touch with what they were doing. What, what, what was it? Yeah, in, in a lot of cases, people are completely disconnected from the emotional side of the business. So they were going in and they were just going through the motions. So say, you know, they'd been running businesses for 20, 25 years and they were going in sitting behind the desk from perhaps, say, eight o'clock till five o'clock. But they weren't being really productive. They weren't, as I say, connecting to mm. the business emotionally. Mm. So obviously that affected the people around them, that affected how they felt, and this led to a, de a decrease in their profitability wow. or just their own morale. And nobody wants that, right? No. You're in business. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, nine, I, I don't know what the figures are, but I'm imagining, you know, at least 99% of people are in business to, to make a profit, Absolutely. but also make a difference, right? Or to solve a problem or to help people. But ultimately, unless you're a multimillionaire philanthropist, you're not doing it for free, are you? <laughs> You're not, no, certainly not, absolutely not. <laughs> so that's really interesting. Um, and so those the personal development side of things, the, the, those tools um, that you've been using yes. for yourself, what are they? Because you still use them now, right? And, absolutely. And, and they're integral to the, the help that you give yes. people now. What are they? Where did, where did they start? What are they motivated by? Well, they were most motivated by uh, a situation when I was about 36, 37. So I'd been through going through some emotional challenges and it had had an effect on my health. And so I'd found myself in a situation where I was really quite poorly. Um, I'd had to go into hospital a few times and so things weren't working very well for me at that particular time in my life. And so from that position, I recognised my strategy was off. Something was completely wrong. And in doing that, I decided that I needed to find a different strategy. Um, and so I went out there and started to research and look at the world's greatest leaders, look at what they did for personal success and how they obtained great things in their lives. And I came across, the first process I came across was meditation, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and I started to introduce it daily into my routine, understanding that my thoughts were chaotic, that I was stressing myself out, and that obviously that was having a physical impact on myself. So I incorporated meditation, and within a very short period of time, I started to notice a difference in how I was feeling and how, if you say, reacting. Um, so I considered myself extremely lucky to continue and develop the meditation process of which I've been doing now for for nearly 20 years. Wow, okay. Um, meditation, let's jump into that. Yes. Right, um, because we, you know, you're, you are, uh, you're, you know, extolling the virtues of it. Absolutely. For 20 years, and you hear about it, you read about it, and obviously, uh, you know, someone will probably be thinking, oh yeah, it's a bit hippie, isn't it? Or is that om, yes, you know, sit on the absolutely. floor, cross the leg, om. Um, so let's clear those kind of things aside, um, those thoughts aside. What does it mean to you? Um, how long do you meditate daily? And then, you know, what would you suggest in terms of, you know, people who might not have done it before and how they okay. make a start with it? Meditation, okay. So there is this sort of perception that it's all a bit, uh, what's the word, age type thing where, you know. But the, the facts are there's an incredible science to meditation. And the science behind it is that we all emit different energy waves we've heard of like when they say about your sleep patterns and you've gone to alpha beta and all these waves well to make it very simplistic in terms it changes the frequency of what we emit in our thoughts so when you start to meditate it will chemically change what's happening in your thoughts and your body which encourages all the good hormones. We, we, we understand about hormones. It reduces stress levels. So you emit a better frequency through your thoughts internally. Your experiences become different. You start you see things to, differently. You see different things. The world you feel. You yeah. do. But it starts from an internal perspective. Mm. So it's working from that internal perspective. Mm. So mm. 
calms everything down. It helps you emit, you know, a happier, a happier you. And it improves your relationships with other people. Mm. And more importantly, it improves the relationship with yourself. It gets you to understand who you are and what you are. What you are. Um, so I'm a big advocate of meditation. I think it's wonderful. I think everybody should do it and give it a go. And just, just go out there, try it for 30 days. I personally meditate for around about an hour a day. Really? That's my choice. It's that good. Wow. It's and what, that the, good. Uh, in the morning, in the evening? When? Mornings, always morning. When we wake up first, you know, you want to set a good platform for your day. So you start meditating, you can go out there and set that good platform. Um, but obviously it depends on people's schedules. Any time is a good time. Where do you start? There are so many books and there are so many videos on YouTube and there are apps and, you know, is, is there anything you can suggest for a newbie? A newbie, yes. I'd suggest go to the website and find an app that suits you. There's so many out there. Just play around with it. You know, just research and find find a, a YouTube app that suits you. They're free. You don't have to pay anything for them. Um, and then I'd suggest you start off with around about 10 minutes a day in the morning, if possible. And then from then, um, do it for a minimum of 30 days and just notice how you feel when you start and when you have obviously work through the 30 days. Just notice how your feelings and how you're going out there and functioning. Um, and I guarantee there'll be an improvement in, in how you're feeling oh, and operating. Oh, guarantee. What do you use? Do you, do you follow a particular um, site or um, advocate of it? Um, again, the, the, there's so many out there. Um, I'd say choose one. For me personally, I've been doing it for so many years. I tend to do my own meditation every morning. I don't use any apps as such. But for you, if you start, it's good to have guided meditation, a structure to it to help you. A lot of times you mentioned, we spoke about earlier, that people fall asleep. So that's quite common when you start to meditate. <laughs> that was me. Yes. <laughs> so just to pair with it. And, um, and, you know, from that 10 minutes, just build and notice the difference. It's all about how you feel. Um, and you'll know yourself if it's something that's it's helping and supporting interesting so meditation then you suggest this to uh clients everybody businesses? really yeah so i go into businesses and show people how to meditate um and get them to experience the benefits for themselves because you're not going to know unless you experience it yourself and what sort of reactions have you had over the years um people tend to be generally open-minded i explain more about the science and how it works um and you know what, these people uh, are paying me, obviously, to make changes and help them change. So I, I, I explain that that's part of the process to try new things. Um, so, yes, the majority of people, they're open-minded enough to want to give it a go. Um, and for a lot of people, it's life-changing. It really is. And had an impact on their business as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we know, you know, if you're wanting to change something in your life, it's visualising a good outcome. And that's what meditation allows you to do in that process as well. Uh, I, I like the sound of that. And I don't meditate, but I'm a big believer in that whole um, clarity of mind because we do, well, a lot of us do experience the overthinking and we worry about things that we have no control over. And somehow we need to find whatever it is, find that happy within ourselves where we are calm of mind and Absolutely. to reassure ourselves that we can handle the situations that... Um, that come to test us. Yes. Um, so me meditation seems to kind of fall into that into that arena, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, really interesting that you're um, advising business owners to use that as part of their business development. I think that's fantastic. Um, let's turn the clock back a little then. Okay. And talk about um, Jenny's childhood. Wow, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> yes. Uh, like, you know, wh where are you from? I detect the Midlands accent, but what part yes. of the Midlands? Tell us about that, where you grew up and, and, and what life was like for you as a youngster. I'm very proud to say I'm a Wolverhampton girl, a black country girl, born and bred. So I was born in um, Wentzfield, um, as I say, part of Wolverhampton City. And we then, not long after, moved to a little place called Ashmore Park. I had two amazing parents. My father was Polish 
and my mother, she was from down south. And they came up to the Midlands because it's obviously work and everything at that particular time. So it was all around uh, my father finding a job. Um, as I say, very loving parents. But oh, God, goodness me, some very dysfunctional stuff going on yeah. when I was, well, growing up. Wow. So um, dad was very religious and mom sort of went along with it. Um, we found ourselves at a very early age in the midst of a lot of emotional upset. Um, so from the age of around about six up to 19, mom and dad decided that they were going to get divorced. And it was just the fallout from that, really. There was quite an impact. There was four of us, so I'm one of four. Um, and my mother stayed in the house, even though she was divorced. Um, she was seeing another man, and she sort of emotionally experienced a lot of depression, anxiety. She was always torn between right things and wrong things to do. And and, and my, my, my dad, he struggled with, with all of that. So the emotional impact for us as children was, at that particular go time going back many years, we weren't classed as a normal family. So, you know, everybody thought, oh gosh, look what's going on in there. And it, 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 was, it was challenging. Really? So people would talk about you yeah. know, and your brothers yeah. as, as a family and yeah. you've, you've sensed that, you heard that. We sensed it, we heard it, we knew that. Um, and like my parents, you know, they did the best that they could, but it wasn't what you class as a normal family life. How did that feel in terms of you, know, you, you going to school and, and knowing this kind of chatter was going on around your family? I think you just get on with it the best way you can. Um, and for me, I think I became a little bit introvert. I think, well, I did. I, th I, I ate my way through all the emotional upset. I chunked up quite a lot as a child. Um, and I went through school not really focused. There was no direction there, unfortunately, because of the situation. So I went through school in a bit of a daze, an emotional daze of just surviving the emotional turnout because th there was a lot going on. So when I came to the end of my school years, I was quite happy to leave. It hadn't been a, a good experience for me. Um, so I left with no qualifications and just knowing that, you know, I need to get a job and, and get on with things. Um, so you just survive like all of us. We all, we all have experiences and stuff. So you, I think you just get on with it the best you can. All of us do. Um, but I say I came out of school with no qualifications. Looking back, there was a, a lot of emotional input that I got from that and feedback. Mm. As I've worked with stuff over the years, it's really helped and supported me. But at the time, you know, it wasn't a particularly good place, I thought, at that time. So then, goodness me, you left school with no qualifications. So school then to work because you said you know yeah. you worked in the financial industry financial services for many years how then did you get to that point what happened in between <laughs> you know you went out and worked what, what what was working life early working life like well, for you then yeah it was get a job so um and financially support yourself so initially i went to a factory and worked for two years three years actually what sort of factory what was being made in there oh gosh I, I was, love factory stories I, need I was to know. a press operator <laughs> really and I, yeah oh. um, yeah looking back it, it, it was interesting I don't think I was meant to do it, it wasn't my li lifelong how uh, long did you work in a factory for three years what was your job there Press operating. So what, what, operating what? what machines, what, doing big, what? big machines putting in these components and then pressing them into objects a lot for the uh, manufacturing for, for cars was that Wolverhampton way then yeah. it was it's a place in Willingall oh, um, gosh. and I don't think I was particularly good at it I kept jamming the presses so <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't uh -oh, it wasn't what like, I was meant to do oh, for the, yeah, like, no, yeah it wasn't my calling for sure <laughs> bosses were thinking how do we, oh, get, rid how do we get rid of Jenny <laughs> so at the age of 19 I thought I'd better get rid of myself I'm oh, not that wow. brilliant at this oh. um, and then I I uh, I did. I, I sold engines and transmissions. I always wow. Loved, yeah, one extreme to the other. So hang on a minute. So you, <laughs> you're <laughs> yeah. saying like I wasn't that good at press operator, but then you, you obviously had this skill or, you know, being a good conversationalist to get into selling. Yes, right? I love working how, with people. How did you fall into that? I had an interview and I must have walked my walk and talked my talk at that particular time. So I convinced them that I could sell. 
and they gave me a job. Excellent. Um, and that wanted a, a career change. Uh, and so I got trains about lorries and gears and, and all that sort of stuff. And I went out there and I really enjoyed it. I started going out and selling stuff. That's incredible. And and a woman in selling yeah. automotive parts, yes. right? Yeah. What, what's, uh, you know, how did... How did uh, customers react to you? I, I can, yeah. I imagine, you can tell me whether I'm right or wrong, there weren't many women doing that job, were there? No, and I think that's why the gentleman used women as a way of getting in and opening up doors. I should say that, but that, yeah, I think that was that was, that was, the, was the plan. Um, but it was great because I met some great people and I went all over the Leicester, Derby, all, the, all over the place. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I got a lot from that job. It was a sense of achievement as well from moving forward with something that I was enjoying. Excellent. But then obviously something changed because yeah. you eventually get to financial services. So what happened in between? Yeah. I get married and I have three wonderful sons and a few part time jobs. Nothing really much in between. And then I get to a time where I think, you know what? I haven't done an awful lot from, you know, achieving qualifications and really didn't achieve stuff at school. So I want a career. And I knew I could. It was just circumstances. So it was the right time. So I decided my, my, my youngest was ready to go to school. And I was going to um, train in some area. Um, and I had an interview in financial services. Um, it was a friend of a friend and it seemed like a great opportunity. So they explained I'd need to, you know, do exams and there'd be qualifications involved and all that. But it, it felt right. It felt really good. How old were you at that time? I was around about 33, 34. Yeah. So at that time then, thinking yeah. back to you left school with no qualifications, yeah, absolutely. you're faced with that crossroads of, right, OK, there's a career opportunity in front of you in front of you yeah. but um, it depends on taking some exams how yeah, did you scary. feel about that do you know I was sort of scared but excited because I hadn't done anything or achieved I thought at school so it was an opportunity to prove something to myself so yeah I was prepared to take on the challenge and happy to do that so was this to become um, an advisor did you do your planning certificates yeah. and so on yes right. yeah so I took lots of exams and got qualified um, did you get to was it advisor did you, did you, were you para planner or adv no, advisor I, I, step no up? independent so excellent I, I, so I started off as a tired agent as they call it so you, yeah and then I moved on to being an independent wow and I just loved I loved the interaction with my clients and going out there and helping people and achieving something that was sort of something that was really important to me. It's an interesting industry. I dabbled in it slightly. I worked for an IFA for a while and right. I did my financial planning certificate level one. I tried level two, just failed miserably. I wasn't re my heart wasn't really in yeah. it. But the business I was working for was really interesting. And I, you know, and I was there for about two years working with advisors and helping advisors. Um, it's it's a fascinating, it fascinating is. field. It is, it is. Um, and so yeah. you worked in that field for how long? Uh, around about 17 years. Ooh. So it was a fantastic opportunity for me. And I did, I, I, I loved what I did. I really did. And, and I continued taking you know, lots of exams and qualifications. So I felt like I was, I was growing at that particular time. It was my own personal development as well. And um, through that time, of course, you're working, you're, you're um, raising a family. What was family life like for you? Well, I seem to repeat the pattern, as we all do. That's one thing that I explain to my clients. We get caught up in emotional patterns in our lives. So I'd gone from having quite a traumatic childhood and then I'd married three beautiful sons. And I felt myself, I was again, once again, in a, a, a relationship that perhaps repeated some of the patterns of my parents. Um, so it, there was bitter and sweet to the, the situation, you know, wonderful with uh, having a family and that. But there were some challenges in the relationship. And then I had to, you know, I was working as a, a had a business and out there doing my stuff there. So it started to, I, I found there was challenges there for me that was continuing to occur. Um, yeah, so, so that was difficult. 
behind the scenes. And how did you overcome those? Well, as I say, I think sometimes you've got to hit that lowest point. And that was when I was 36, 37. So it's only from that point of uh, adversity and, uh, you know, having the ill health and going into hospital. And at the time, my parents coming in and helping and supporting me. And I'm thinking, I understood strategies in a way. I started to be a little bit familiar about things working and not working. And noticing that it wasn't working. There was something that wasn't right. Obviously, the relationship wasn't working. But for me, personally, um, there was a lot of challenges for myself. So it's just a bit of a wake, a wake up call sometimes mm. when you get to that situation where, you know, you, you, you can't function because of your health and emotionally and physically you're feeling burnt out. So I think it was hitting that rock bottom point that made me realise if I continue doing this, oh, it's, you know, it wasn't good. I, I couldn't see the years ahead as being something that was going to be good for me personally. So what happened in terms of you being in hospital so poorly that, you, you know, your mum and dad were helping you? Yeah, it was a stress. And as I say, yeah, I've got what we call some autoimmune conditions, which was like a thyroid dysfunction. Um, so, you know, it was over and I was like having challenges. So I got to the situation where my body just went no more. So what in terms of what intense fatigue? Explain it, to me kind of those okay. symptoms. What, what, intense how you fatigue. Um, so the one day I was at work and you, you had a turn and your body just stops you in its tracks because of the stress that you've been putting it under. Um, so emotionally, physically. So I, I couldn't get up and do anything. My body just, uh, you know, I, as I say, severe for fatigue. And I was on medication, so I had to go into hospital to have the medication to calm everything down. And then a year later, I got another illness and I ended up back in hospital, another problem on steroids and stuff and again fatigue but this time I was it was my stomach and it's just as I say you have to go there sometimes to get the wake-up call um, and I just didn't like what my future was looking like I sort of looked to the future and it, emotionally as I say more than anything more than physically really it, it was just looked rather dark um, was, was there a singular moment where you realized you know you had that kind of uh, uh, epiphany and went right okay something has to change what what do i do what do i need to do i went on a, a seminar a course and they did some work with us at the time um which allows you to look into your future your future self and as i went through that process i went ahead to tw 20 years and i saw a version of me that i didn't like and that scared me. So I saw a version of me that was emotionally, not who I really was. So I was physically and mentally. I got to the stage where I was just crying all the time in my life. I was just so sad and I was projecting that. I didn't want my sons to see me so sad. I felt that that's not who I really was. And that process in itself gave me a massive wake up call. It was to change my life. I needed to take con my control back. This is this is astounding. I need to just go. We'll just rewind a minute because this is a course that that encouraged you to to um, you know see what you thought you you might be like or imagine what you thought yeah. you might be like in twenty years. What kind of a course is this? Who runs this course? I'm this I'm intrigued. <laughs> like because genuinely. You might be listening. So this is an interesting course. How do I find out where these things exist so I can actually work on myself? Where did you find this? It was Tony Robbins, the man himself. <laughs> no. My friend. Oh, okay. oh he's, 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 he's coming to Birmingham soon, he, I read, I think. He, he's just a formidable force. Wow. He just, you know, that, that inv investment of those four days was just so life-changing for me. That's amazing. Okay, so that's that's really interesting. That 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 um because he's so well known around he's the world, isn't yeah. he, for his kind of transformational conferences and so on. They cost a fair bit of money to get they on, do. but they actually, do. you know, sometimes when you really 
are a, a time where you want to make yes. a change. Sometimes it, it, you might feel it's worth that investment. And obviously for you, yeah. it was. Well, I always say, you know, coming from an investment background, you'll return on your investment. So you're as good as what you invest in yourself. So, you know, forget about some. I know we all love the handbags and we all like the nice clothes yeah, and, and we all like the and shoes the and the stuff. And the, mm, the stuff, right, yeah. But if you can understand that investing in yourself, your return on your investment pays the greatest dividends. It really, really does. And this is where I started to understand that if you're going to make a difference, if you want to really understand you, then invest in yourself and take the time to develop a relationship with yourself and work on yourself. And that seminar was the start of that process for me. Amazing. So you went through that course and then you almost kind of looked at yourself as a project. It's kind of interesting yeah. the way you're talking about yourself because it's it's as, almost as if you're looking at yourself and going, right, OK, this is a project. I've got to work this out. Got to, got to, I've got to shape it up. Absolutely. I've got to move it forward into a new direction. Yeah. Is, is that... Do you, do you think is that really what we've all got to do to, if we really want to make a fundamental change in our lives? Absolutely. That's my work is designed. If you want to function at your optimum level, the work is designed to work on your internal structures. Get your foundations right. Get yourself functioning. Understand who you are and develop that relationship then. And then you can move forward with strength and conviction that's what makes the changes. Yes, it's great to have like all the other stuff in businesses. It's great to get the other stuff, the, the strategies and that. But if your own internal strategies are out, which I recognise mine were, if your own internal talk and emotional systems are out, you're never going to be able to bring what you want to develop on the outside of your life. So, yeah, invest in yourself. That's, that's, that's my message for everybody. Wow. Um, so, Tony Robbins, you came away from that going, yeah, yeah OK, I'm going to make a change. So who were you before you were, walked into that room? And who would you say you are now? Can you kind of sum yeah. up in like maybe like a little list, imagine in your head, a list on the left of some words yeah. of who you were, the list yeah. on the right. Who yeah. are you now? That's really interesting. That, that, that That's great. So, yeah, I was a wreck, an emotional physically and mentally. I suffered from um, anxiety, panic attacks. I was becoming agoraphobic. I'd got illnesses. So I was a bit of a mess. Um, I was constantly crying and, you know, going through the work most, uh, mode as you do. But underneath, wasn't so, I, I wasn't coping with things very well at all. Um, so, you know, if my boys were to say, Mom, you're so different now, I work on myself completely, 100% of the time. I understand to be my b the best version that I can be. So I work on my confidence. I'm confident. I want to make a difference. I want to show people, no matter where you are in your life, do you know that, that, that there's a way forward with all of this to work on that personal development. All the great people in the world start with themselves. That's where it is. So now I'm resilient. Things do happen to all of us. We're aware of that. But it's about coming back. Um, I'd like to think I'm strong, um, resourceful, a visionary. And it all starts with that inner dialogue, the dialogue that we have with ourselves. That's where it starts. So I see myself so different from where I was. Thank goodness. So different. You going through that journey of transformation, did you uh, lose people along the way? You know, sometimes um, friends and family uh, are not always as supportive as you might hope. Did, was there anything around that and people thinking, what are you doing? You're, you're going to go and see this man in a room, a conference room with thousands of other people. And, you know, you've changed, Jenny. Did you get any of this? Oh, always, always, always. Who do you think you are? You know, you're crazy and what are you doing and, you know, come back to your roots type attitude. Really? People fear change. So, you know, I had so much critical feedback from how I should be and what I should be. But deep down, you, it's about knowing yourself. People fear change. People fear it when they see you come into your own. 
So that's just part of the process of evolving. You're going to get, I'd say to people, you're going to generally get that feedback because people fear change. And that's okay. That's okay. How does that make you feel about, you know, the people who didn't quite believe in you changing or didn't quite want you changing? You know, now I think I want to work with people that have the same mindset. And if people, I've lost people along the way and that's fine. We're just at different junctions, different journeys. And I send them all my love and wish them all the best. But sometimes you've got to move on yourself and make different decisions. And if people don't want to be part of that journey, then that's fine. That's their decision and that's their choice. But you've got to be true to yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself. So I wish all those people the very best. But for me, I need to follow my own heart. And, and, and that's what you know I tend to continue to do and help other people to do as well. Brilliant. Do you have a routine? I mean, um, we talked about meditation. You start off the day with an hour. Are there any other things that you do um, mindset-wise um, to ensure you are staying at the top of your game and the things that you can advise other people to do as well? Again, absolutely. It's all about strategies and structure. So I start my day with meditation, um, as I say, around about an hour. I then align myself, so I've got some some things that I do just so that, you know, I'm realigning and, and I use what we call some tapping sequences. And tapping is just a way of, of waking up like your energy resources within your body. So I do a few of those. And then I'm very mindful as much as I can, you know, 85% of the time about what I eat, what I choose to eat, um, the people I associate with, the things I read, the, p the things I expose myself to, I think I'd say to anybody, just put in the good stuff. For example, if you're mentally going out there all the time and let, you know, letting all the wrong thoughts go in and letting people download all the wrong rubbish and watching the wrong programmes and reading the wrong stuff, you know, there's a checkout price for that. So just being very, I'm very mindful of what I let into my, my thoughts and into my 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 situation, my reality. What sort of stuff would you say is the wrong stuff? What do you not, um, what sort of content do you not engage in? And, and how do you how do you act? How do you behave? So again, if you're having a conversation with somebody, I want to make sure it's a right conversation. So if there's anything really negative going on, I, I try to either steer away or ch change the conversation because it's just so important to allow the right, right thoughts and emotions in for yourself personally. Um, I'm careful what I watch on TV. So again, choosing the, the, the right things to watch. So I, I'm always screening everything. Is this an investment for me? Is this something that's going to serve me well in, 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 in what I do? So that could be food, emotionally, having conversations with people, working with people. So it's about letting in the, the right energy, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, do you watch much of the news or are you a news avoider? I tend to be very careful mm. around the news yeah. just because if you listen and let in all the horror stories, it doesn't make you feel good. I'd say to people, be selective on what you let in and go out there and make a difference. If you wanted to see a change, make the difference yourself. Be the, be the change that you want to see out there. That's what I'd say. So just be careful about what we're letting. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. It is a tough one. Um, I'm a journalist. And I know, you know, I know. I, yeah. I find that hard to say with knowing that you're a yeah, journalist. Do you actually. know what? It's, it's, it's not a problem because I battle with, you know, news agendas. They, okay. they have, you know, news has always been that you, you know, we report the horror stories, the, the, the tragedies, the, the difficulties um, in society. Um, and it's hard not to be, um, you know, it's not hard to turn off the news uh, and not feel negative and hopeless. But Absolutely. I echo what you say about um, 
doing what you can to try and make a change, to try and affect change in, in whatever way in your yeah. life. Um, otherwise, that that feeling of hopelessness will overwhelm you, and and really, you know, we've got yeah. to do the best we can to stay positive. But um, I'd also say, please don't avoid the news totally. No. We need to know what's going on in the world, really. No, <laughs> you know, it's really important to, to to get a feel for what is happening in society. Just um, take it and, and and make a difference with it. Yeah, yeah, um, totally agree. Totally agree. And in terms of what you're doing, making a difference. So you're running your business now. Um, what sort of plans do you have in the future? You know, even if it's short term or if you have long term ideas, what are you thinking about the direction for your business? As I say, I'm committed to wanting to make a difference out there. So short term, I'm currently working with like small to medium sized businesses and their employees on the internal strategies and helping them develop, improving bottom lines, but also helping people get that quality of life. Um, and what I'm looking to do is take that into the bigger organisations and make a difference. I also, we want to be going into the schools. We want to be going into universities, anywhere, just to educate and show people how to function at their optimum level from this internal perspective. And then I'm looking to train people. I'm currently doing that at the moment within my business so they can go out there and we can replicate this. So we become a community. We become a team of people that make the difference. And so I have some fantastic girls that are coming on board at the moment as we speak that really feel passionate about this as well. That sounds really exciting, That's, actually. In, yeah, you know, it in, is. In, in kind of, you know, getting an army almost it to distribute yes. the, the goodness yes. that, you, that you can offer, that you've learned and that are, yes. are offering. Yeah. Yes. And then from that, it's just conven continuing to develop and making that difference wherever that, uh, that takes us. As I say, my background is business. But wherever it needs to go, um, you know, we do workshops, we do one-to-ones, we do group stuff. So it's whatever it needs for the individuals just to teach them some new skills. So yes, that's that's where we're looking to go with the business. Fantastic. Um, thanks for sharing that vision um, with me. That's amazing. It sounds really, really exciting. Just to wrap up then, for someone listening who is probably feeling the way you felt before you knew, you realised you needed to make changes yeah. in your life, you know, someone who is feeling depressed, feeling anxious, or, you know, they've got their own business, it's not going well, you know, they've been working on it for, for years and things just don't feel right. They do want to make some real um, profound, positive changes in their life, positive strides forward. What sort of headline advice would you give to someone who's in that place right now? Become your biggest project. Understand it's about getting that internal reference point, the infrastructure right. And so invest in yourself. You're so worth it. Everybody's so worth it. And get people in to help you like what we do, get companies in, you know, we do that, help people. I continually get people to realign and develop me as well. I'm a great believer that we all need support and we all need to help. And it doesn't matter where you are. Find out what's in your heart. Do some soul searching. I've mentioned meditation today. It's a great place to start, to go in and find out about your internal references, opening up your own internal sat-nav. And have fun. Life is meant to be fun. And if things aren't fun at the moment, change it. Make the changes that you need to know. And, yes, enjoy the process. And you can turn around anything. That would be my message. doesn't matter where you are. Just believe in yourself. Jenny, thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, what a woman and a relaxing voice as well. I can see why she does meditation and mindfulness. Now, if you want to connect with Jenny, then her website is truepotential.biz or you can jump on LinkedIn and find her at Jenny Carpenter. Thanks for listening. As ever, come and say hi on Instagram or Twitter at Fab Woman Podcast or use the hashtag Fab Woman Podcast. Come back next time. 
The Fabulous Woman podcast is a Raging Brum production.